Yeah, well, about a year ago, I was going to the dentist to get, uh, I had to get some cavities done and a root canal, and then I stopped going. Yeah, it could be terrifying. It could be terrifying to watch. Well, I'm going next week. They're going to tell me to stop with the donuts and that stuff, but, you know. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and in our How to Intune series, I like the name of that a lot, we're going to keep going with some things. We're going to look at app packaging next. So today I'm going to start with basic app packaging Intune, and then in the next few episodes, we're going to look at some more advanced functionality, what you can do, kind of dispel all the myths that um, Intune can't do what others can do, because it absolutely can. It's like mouth surgery and art all at the same time. Okay, so as far as app packaging and Intune, in the very beginning, you can only deploy a single file MSI file. And when I say the very beginning, I mean 2016, 2017. Since then, things have changed and Intune has amazing support for any kind of app you want to deploy. So let's talk through a basic one today, um, which will be a great example of what's packaged. It'll be Google Chrome. So what you're gonna need is a few things. The first thing you're gonna need is the Microsoft uh, Win32 content prep tool. So this is found on GitHub. I'll put a link below in the whatever. And uh, this is a command line utility that you download and I just keep it on the root of C. So if I go to C, Microsoft Win32 content prep tool, there it is. And you call this exe from the command line. Okay, the next thing you're gonna need is the app that you wanna download. Now I have this directory, Win32, and I put all the apps in there um, that I wanna migrate so that they're all in a nice neat folder. So I have Google Chrome ready, um, and we have the Google Chrome standalone enterprise MSI. I just found this online, get the offline installer. You can do this with pretty much any app. So that's all I need, and it's in this directory. So this will be like my working directory. Eventually I could put PowerShell scripts in here, bat files, anything else I wanna include with the app. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a uh, command line. Okay, let's see if we can make that a little bigger. We can. So there's two ways to do this. The first thing you can do is you can actually call um, C and the path to your tool. And it's going to proceed to ask me questions. So the source folder is where I'm storing this setup file. So the source folder is this path. The setup file is the actual name of this file. You don't need the whole path. So I'm going to copy that as well. And lastly, it wants to know where you want to put the Intune Win file that's going to create, which is the single image file of the package. And I'm gonna put that in the same place. And then it wants to know if I wanna make a catalog folder, which I do not. Now I could hit enter here, but I'm actually gonna escape and uh, we're gonna cancel this. Because another way we can do this is to feed it the parameters all at once. So I'm gonna say Microsoft Win32 Content Prep Tool and I'm gonna call the tool. I'm gonna pass the C parameter, that's for container. And that's where I'm keeping the folder, uh, the file. S is for setup file. Uh, that would be what I do. MSI. Yeah. So that's the C is the name of the. Let's see if I can make that bigger. Yeah. So that's the name of the setup file. And then the last parameter is O, which is where I'm going to put it. And I'm going to put it where the source file is. And I'm going to hit return. And it's going to go ahead and take that install file. Now, even though I'm specifying the source file, any other file I would have had in here would have been packaged. So bat files, logos, PowerShell scripts, which we'll go into a little bit um, uh, in future episodes. But see, now next to my MSI, I have the Intune Win, and that's really all I need. So we just created the package. And so how do we get it to Intune? So let's go ahead and log into Intune and we're gonna to go to apps, windows. Now I do have Google Chrome here, but I don't care. I'm gonna put it here again for you guys. Select app type. 
this is going to give us everything, right? All the different kinds of things we can deploy. We are concerned with Windows app Win32 all the way at the bottom. And we're going to hit select. Okay. Select the app package file. So we're just going to point this to wherever we put that output file. It's going to be C Win32 Google Chrome. And there it is. See, it's reading it, it's got the version. Now, because our source is an MSI, it's gonna go ahead and extract a lot of this info. If it wasn't, we'll just put it in manually. So it's, it's not really a big deal. So let's go ahead and um, say Google Chrome. We can edit the description. Google Chrome, we'll call this Google Chrome latest version. Um, the, I'll uh, say the standard Google browser that everyone is used to. And this will only matter for the company portal, right? If you're going to show this, you want to have some description, um, that everyone is used to some text, um, some other text if you want here and that'll look nice in the company portal publisher you do have to put a publisher we'll just put google because it's somewhat irrelevant um logo so it's good practice to have a logo so i'm gonna go ahead and find one okay so this looks pretty good i'll save the image as save it to pictures Okay. Don't ask me about copyright implications with that. I have no idea. Just do your best. And if it matters, talk to people who might know that sort of thing. There we go. Chrome. Okay. So next is a really important part. Install command. It extracted this from the MSI, but we could put anything here. And once we go through a more advanced application, we're going to use PowerShell and we would actually use this install command to invoke um, invoke PowerShell one. But we're going to leave this as is because we just want to install it there. It supports switches. Basically, what you need to know about this install command, this functions as if you are sitting in the app directory running as system. So, for example, if I were to go back here see let's see let's call it ps tools ps uh ps exec ps exec oh what am i doing here so if i were running command a system and i hopped over to c win 32 google chrome all right i'm sitting in google chrome as system now, this is very important if you're testing if you're not sure of the command and how it works what i can do is i can go ahead and take this command line right and i'm literally going to throw it in here that should silently install chrome on my machine because whatever you're running as system within like in the relative path is the equivalent of this line here. Because I get that question a lot. What do I put? How do I test things? And, and even though it extracted it here, once we write our own lines, we're going to have a way to test it. Let's actually check the box because I don't believe I had Chrome installed. Oh, and there we go. So I know it works. Very important way to test. So let's keep going for now. Um, operating system architecture. I'm going to select both. If you only want it to run on 64-bit machines and you only want it to run on 64, I'm not concerned. I will say these are the only required parameters, unless you care. Um, I usually leave this at 1607. Now people say to me, Steve, why do you leave it at 1607? No one's going to have that. It should be at something like Windows 10, 21H1, 21H2. Here's the deal. I'm setting the bare minimum so that Intune doesn't have to think <laughs> if I don't care. Right. And these are the only things that are required for apps that you do care about the physical memory available, disk space processors, you know, more of your specific use cases, then it does matter. So I guess for now I could say, look, I at least want you on Windows 10, 20 H2. Um, 
you know, you can also do additional requirement rules, which we will talk about in subsequent uh, videos. Those are pretty interesting. As far as the format for the detection rule, this is how Intune knows if the app made it to the device. We can do a script, but I'm gonna do manually configure detection rules and we're gonna add. Now, because this is an MSI installer, I could just click MSI and it'll look for that code in the registry. However, I've not had always good experience with, experiences with MSIs. So we're actually gonna do something a little different. We're gonna do the file path of that executable. So because I installed it locally, you know, I could simply go here, uh, open file location. And we can see here, this app lives in this path, C program files, Google Chrome application, and that's the executable. Um, now you've seen us do this with the migration type stuff. If it's not really an app and it's a script, then we write our own detection rule, but we need a way to tell Intune it's here. So I'm gonna put the path, C program files, Google Chrome application. That's great. And the file I am looking for is Chrome exe. And all I want to check for is if the file or folder exists. Now you can check the version string of it, the size of the app, um, but I'm going to keep this bare bones and I am not associating this on, this is not a 32 bit app on a 64 bit client. We're going to leave this as no, that's not really that important. Now I'm going to click okay. Okay. Next. Does this app have any dependencies? I can chain about a hundred dependencies up here if I wanted to. Um, this means don't install Chrome unless meh, is installed. Maybe that's Adobe Reader or Edge or my security tools. So you can have Intune check first and that's how you can kind of create your um, sequence, right? Which app goes where first. So, um, supersedence is also very important. Um, supersedence will allow me to upload an app and have it replace um, a previous version, have it uninstall that version and install the new version. So we'll talk about that um, in upcoming series. Uh, scope tag is for role-based access control. We're not talking about that right now and assignments. So how do apps get deployed to devices through Intune? How do you do it? Is it device? Is it users? So here's the deal for required, but I want the app to be required. You got to pick users or devices here when you're, you can't mix groups, that's not going to work out well. So I can make this required for my M365 group. So all my devices that are tagged by autopilot with that group tag, will get this automatically silent install. Um, I could just say, okay, now it's going to go to this Mark eight project team. It's going to be a required app for a specific user group. Okay. And I could push it that way as long as I don't mix users and devices, right? Another thing I could do is make it available for enrolled devices. This is only users. So this should not be here as far as devices go. You're going to want user groups here. Meaning if I'm a certain user and I open the company portal, I'm going to see this here. Well, what does that look like? All right. So let's switch over to our client for a second and take a look at the company portal. So if I go to the company portal, now I already have Chrome installed on here. Um, but it'll still show. So take a look. It's available to me because it's been assigned as available. So I can see it. There's my logo. I didn't put that much information here, I guess. And users can also have the option to uninstall the app as, as well as install it, right? So if, if you just want to make this optional, that's a great uh, thing here to use the company portal. If you want it to be required, um, then again, you're going to use this group. The required section up here you're going to choose your uh your autopilot group i don't recommend all devices now i have that here you have some options do we want to show toast notifications to the end user show all notifications show only notifications for computer restarts hide all toast notifications now i like showing them but we're actually going to hide them in the future when we do our own custom ones um and we can uh, determine when the app is available and how long it has to install. And this could be in the device time zone or, 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 zone or using universal um, UTC. So 
Uh, let's get rid of that. And we can also make the uh, app available as soon as possible. And delivery optimization is something we're gonna get into in the future. Um, so now the app's uploaded. I can hit next and save and we'll be good to go. Again, I have the app already. So let's pretend I hit save. Okay, so we're gonna click on Google Chrome. Once the app has been deployed right from the overview page, you get some nice um, uh, reporting about it. I can see how many devices it installed on, how many it failed on. I can see among my users who has it. I can click properties and see all those parameters I set, install, uninstall, detection rules. You see it's a sign required. I made it required to my M365 five devices. I also made it available to all users just in case. Um, we can see the device install status specifically here. If there was an error, what it is. And right from here, I can drill down on um, that device. They give you pretty good optics into your app and a uh, good way to be able to manage it from here and see what's going on. Well, there you have it. We deployed a very basic app. It was a, a, a single file application. It only had the setup file, but we went through all the parameters. Now, when we start making things a little more complex or I shouldn't say complex, I'm gonna say we're gonna add more. Um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we'll be familiar with the foundation so that we could build upon that. Oh, and don't forget uh, this Sunday, that's November 5th, I think at 9 p.m. Eastern time, we're gonna be doing another AMA. If you wanna participate, uh, you can go here to the Discord link thing. See, I got it that time. Uh, and if you just want to watch and you know you don't want to participate there, um, you can just see it live streaming right here on YouTube. I think that's everything. Later. One, two.